From the barrios of Jalisco and Michoacan, Mexico, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel casts a dark shadow that extends far beyond the borders of a single nation and into the streets and communities of places like Houston and beyond. The CJNG is one of the most powerful and dangerous criminal organizations in Mexico, characterized by a business model of extreme violence and trafficking in the most deadly of substances, cocaine, heroin, meth, and fentanyl. My name is Alamdar Hamdani, and I am the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Texas, and I'm here to announce the DOJ's next efforts to disrupt the CJNG's activities. A 50-count indictment charging 41 people of drug trafficking in cocaine, heroin, meth, and fentanyl, as well as money laundering. Those charged are alleged to have sourced the drugs from Mexico, smuggled the drugs from Mexico across the border into the southern district of Texas, into Houston, and into places like Atlanta, Pensacola, New Orleans, Nashville, and Chicago. The charges allege that all 41 defendants operated under the overall control of the CJNG. Of the 41 defendants, DEA, United States Marshal Service, and other law enforcement partners have taken 20 defendants into custody over the course of the last week. Three were already in custody, two have passed away, and 16 remain at large, including Roque Zamundo Mendoza of Michoacan, the main source of supply of the drug trafficking alleged in the indictment. There are fugitives in Mexico, in Houston, and as far as Laos. The arrests are a culmination of a 63-month OCDEF organized crime drug, drug enforcement task force investigation that spanned from early 2019 to the present. All charged, all charged, face life in federal prison, as well as other penalties for other kinds of counts. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the drugs. The drugs that have been seized are 219 kilograms of cocaine, 34 kilograms of heroin, 550 kilos of meth, and 22,600 pills laced with fentanyl. Have you ever heard the term, one pill can kill, when it comes to fentanyl? 22,600 deadly pills. In 2021, over 107,000 Americans died from drug overdoses, with 66% of those deaths related to synthetic opioids like fentanyl. The cartel's ruthless pursuit of profit has come at the cost of countless young lives, leaving families and communities across the country devastated. The fight against the CGNG, CJNG's deadly fentanyl trade remains an ongoing battle. And I can tell you that battle requires every one of the people up here, ATF, HPD, DEA, United States Marshal Service, and the Galveston PD. It takes an all-of-government approach to stem the tide of the CJNG. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Danny Como with the DEA. This is a very significant case for the city of Houston. We work together as a team, as one here, from the city, federal, state, and the U.S. Attorney's Office to dominate this drug cartel. And we have made a difference. Not only have we made a difference, we save lives. By these individuals being arrested, the drugs being taken off the street, we have saved lives. I want the citizens to understand we're doing our part as a team, as one, to make the citizens of Houston safe. Howdy. I'm T. Michael O'Connor. I'm the U.S. Marshal of the Southern District of Texas. You've probably heard this saying, justice is coming. Well, I can assure you justice is here. And here's a prime example of a collaboration of multi-agencies from local, state, and federal. 
The marshal service is well known for pursuing a fugitives. I consider them predators to our society as a whole. And they are so good at doing this. You see the successes that we have across the nation in one of the collaborations that I have been a part of that has been in sync from the day one and, and now shows the results. I can only assure you that we will continue to collaborate with the agencies here and make a difference in keeping our community safe and having assisting the law enforcement, local law enforcement as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I just want to say good afternoon to everyone. Um, I, just like everyone else, extremely proud of our partnership, uh, state, local, federal, um, all of our partners, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, the Southern District. The city of Houston has got more support to me than anybody in the nation, and I just want to thank you. This is a five-year, over five-year investigation. A lot of work goes on uh, behind the scenes, and I just want to thank everyone. But I want to spell special thanks to those task force officers, the men and women that are on the front line that are really doing the dangerous work. I want to commend them for what they do, but a message, a quick message to any cartel, or any organized criminal activity, we stand strong here, and I'm very proud of it, and we'll continue to stand strong. Um, there's some outstanding um, defendants out there. Uh, we're going to get them as well. And this is a message to everyone in this city, in this region. Uh, the partnership that we have is second to none, and we're strong and we're moving forward. And I just want to thank you uh, for your support um, and everybody else that's, that's standing with me today. And we'll continue to move forward in this region um, to put bad people in jail and make our city, our region safer. So thanks for what everybody's done uh, in this uh, operation and in, in this big investigation. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. We're happy to take some questions as it relates to uh, this operation, uh, operation known as Operation Rainmaker. Any questions? Yes. Do we know the immigration status of uh, any of these fugitives that have been uh, captured? Uh, so the fugitives who have not, well, the fugitives who have not been captured, yes, we do know the immigration status. Um, each one is different. Some of them are citizens, some of them are citizens of Mexico. Uh, but yeah, that'll be part of kind of the package we put together when we uh, do our, uh, when we go out and we, we try to apprehend fugitives. Other than drugs, do we know if they're involved in, uh, in any immigrant smuggling at the border? So this indictment is about drug smuggling and, and, and as well as uh, money laundering. And that's what I want to focus on. Uh, we will, of course, our investigations always continue. And we look at all different aspects of every crime that's out there. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any reason to believe that any of the fugitives are in Southeast Texas right now? Some of them are from Houston. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, at this point, uh, you know, we're actively looking for these fugitives, which is why I've got them up here. But if you look at the actual slides, you'll see in there um, some of them are actually in Houston or Houston or Mexico. One of the things about the CJNG you'll see in this, because you've got the CJNG is, uh, they're all, they all work for the CJNG. They're all under the control of the CJNG. You'll see some folks going back and forth to Mexico and into Houston. Do you have more information on how exactly they were uh, trafficking these drugs, what their operation looked like? Right now, I want to, what, what I can tell you is what's in the indictment, which is they smuggle the drugs across the border into the Southern District of Texas. And they go to Houston, that would be a hub, and then they send it to other places around the country. Of course, using a variety of individuals, many of them have been arrested. What else can we learn about this cartel, specifically about their operations and the fact that they're here in Houston and operating here in the States? That's a great question. What it tells you right now is the CJNG is not just confined to Michoacala or to Jalisco. Right? It's in Houston. Its folks are in Houston. Its folks are in other parts of the country. And that is the big message we want to send is that the Jalisco New Generation Cartel isn't just some far off entity. They're in the streets of Houston. They're in our communities. Um, and these folks were all under the control of that cartel. Uh -huh. 
must you say that? <laughs> um, uh, yes. The people taken into custody, I mean, is there any indication were they in one like cell, one group, or these multiple groups that are under the control of this cartel? That's a great question. So uh, the carts, first of all, the, they're, all, they're all under the control of the cartel. Uh, the very first individual, uh, that uh, individual number one, um, and I'll tell you his name real quick before I forget. Um, Zamudio Mendoza. Um, he is the main source of supply when it comes to these drugs coming across the border into the Southern District of Texas. Uh, but all of them were under the control of the uh, CJNG. But to the, to the question of was this one, we have, we have 41 people here who were charged, 23 taken into custody. Were they all in one group working together? Are these like different factions yeah. under the control of the cartel? Count one of the indictments is a conspiracy that involves all of them, all 40. Are you guys adding El Mencho in this indictment? Say it again. Are you guys adding El Mencho in this indictment? Okay, our investigation always continues. And so I can't talk about what we've got and what, what that investigation looks like. But I can tell you, we are vigilant and we are constantly looking at um, additional charges or additional targets. Why announce today? Huh? Why announce today? It's, been, it's been five years. You're yep. still working this. Right. So first of all, I think it is incredibly important to educate the community here in Houston and elsewhere of the CJNG and the cartel itself and what it does. But secondly, uh, the indictment was just recently unsealed last week, and last week is when we started arresting individuals. And so last week, um, I think we, is when we arrested about 20 individuals. We thought now is a good time to sit down and talk. Of course, what we can't do is talk about a case while it's still under seal. Once it got unsealed, uh, we made the move to stop talking about it and to educate the community. When were they arrested? When were they arrested? Last week, um, I think over the coming days. So they've been they've been coming in waves. Some of them turned themselves in, some of them we've captured, and they've had hearings throughout the last week. Our, our main prosecutor um, on the case has been busy dealing with detention hearings for the past week and a half. Uh, where? Oh, where? Oh, Houston, um, I think, I'll tell you exactly. Um, I believe we had s some come from Denver, from Colorado, uh, but most of them have been here in Houston um, and, and, and along the border where we've captured most of them. You mentioned that two of these defendants have uh, passed away, I guess, since they were charged. Do you have any other details on that? No other details. 